the alien. Is the stream working? Okay, you're not supposed to be watching your show. Am I okay? I can hear you with the stream. <laughs> Am I okay? I wanna watch the show. <laughs> Good morning everyone and welcome 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 how's everyone doing do, do, can everyone hear me fine is the music too loud let me know now before I mess up mm. turn the music down a bit more. Is it loud? There's, it's a playlist. I can't just keep changing it. Doesn't matter. Anyway. Right. So today we are looking at... I think it's the final part of the Half God lesson. Let me change screens. Here we go. If you weren't here for the past few weeks, we're looking at half gods. Um, I'll recap everything nice and fast so we can move on to today's lesson. But I'll give you the most important little parts, in my opinion. Cool. So we have smashed half god over here. This is the first thing we looked at. So the worst case scenario that we get put in in the half guard. Morning, Arch. Uh, which is these positions here, okay? I've got a picture of them right here. So underhook and cross face, okay? That means this position. Seeding style passes is this one, and octopus is the last one, okay? These are your most common positions you get smashed on from the bottom of half guard. Um, you've probably all been put in them somehow and been passed by it, like me as well. Um, but these are, I think, I believe there's a, there's only these three little situations here that you're going to come across in most cases when you're getting squashed, okay? Um, so that's the first thing we looked at. We looked at all the available counters to those positions. First one is our lockdown chain, which we saw Eddie Bravo doing in comp. Um, these are all recovery, so we looked at the twist sweep is the little pendulum of the hips side to side we go one the bridge which is the superman so you go one way then the other and the all of these are just to recover so there's not nothing special about it um butterfly recovery Which we said is good to use when we can't um, get our first little techniques going on. What's going on here? My camera's stuck. Okay, so that's our butterfly recovery. Uh, and then we have the most important one. So you, the, the underhook and crossface one, you should be okay um, recovering from those. But the one you've got to think about is the seeding style. So these three over here, they're the most important ones. The, these two, sorry. Seeding style and octopus, because that would change your whole um, game plan when you're getting squashed in those, because they follow different rules, okay? So just as a reminder, this is what they're aiming to do to you, this pass. My camera's bugged. Yeah. 
and this is the counter to that. So you frame the neck and you just get your forehead in the full on in between you guys. We have the octopus style, which is this style of passing where they switch their base. And the counter to that is usually the man overboard, we call it, where we chuck the person to the side and we pull guard. Then we looked at all the strategies involving um, half guard. Okay, we have old school half guard, butterfly half guard, knee shield and hip clamp. And then there's all of these as well that I didn't go into. But this will give you a fundamental game when you're starting out. Okay, we have the underhooking chain, which is all the old school stuff where we're looking towards the back and etc. See if I can reset this. Mm, hold on. We're back. So then we have the old school sweep chain. This is when people wizard us. The wizard sweep. Which is when they base out. But I'm just gonna blast through these now. We've got the half guard. The primary focus of it is sweeps. Um, we had the give variation of that. Knee shield, we said we're gonna use that mostly for attacks. Okay, we looked at the loop choke and Kimura trap. And the hip clamp is just to keep people stuck in there. So again, standing opponents, sometimes they don't like staying on their knees. So throw in the hip clamp, which is the cross of the feet. To keep them in there anyway that's a quick recap for like last week's stuff but today we're looking at quarter guard um i did post all of those um moves on the discord page so if you want to recap those after just download the file um on the discord i'll send a link but today's quarter guard that's what we're focusing on so today the main so we looked at a proper half guard where the person's knees in okay which means like they're on the heels like this and they're sitting down allowing you to play half guard but a lot of times they will start the sequence with like a knee slice so you won't even be able to get your half guard in place um and we need to know how to deal with that and that's where quarter guard comes in okay so just so you understand what i mean this is what i mean so we're playing against the standing opponent and he starts by passing like this okay with a knee slice in place so it's harder for you and he's trying to just do a basic knee slice countering a knee slice is like one of the most if not one of the, knee cut is probably the most used pass in jiu-jitsu everyone kind of uses it all the time so knowing how to deal with that is really important and should be one of your priorities if you are going to be playing half guard. But this is where quarter guard comes into play. Quarter guard, okay, is a sequence where... Let me see if I can zoom in. Uh, that's long. Never mind. So quarter guard... I don't know how to zoom into this, but let's go like this. Is where we trap the guy's foot. This is a good image I found online about it, right? So the person's knee sliced, so they got their knee through, and your whole goal is just to trap the end of their foot. That's quarter guard, okay? Um, basically half of half guard, that's why we call it quarter guard. But it's a fantastic tool to stop people from passing and to set up lots of sweeps um, and like back takes as well in the future. But your main transitions from quarter guard that you've got to learn is primarily the deep half and the reverse half, okay? The waiter is an extra thing, but these main these are the main two that you're going to have to deal with when you're playing quarter guard. So we're going to look at all of those, right? Any questions about quarter guard before we go? Because you must understand the quarter guard before we go on. So we're doing it because of the knee cut. Okay, 
and you can also force this after this is going to be a combination move to our old school moves so we have our old school sweep here which is this one which we can force the person into the quarter guard okay which i didn't do that but we can combine that with this Right, so the first on your primary sweep is the Lucas Leitch sweep, which comes from the quarter guard, which is this one here. So I go for a knee cut here. Kirstine is going to be doing the moves now. I go for a knee cut. She um, gets the underhook on me and traps my foot. So notice how she's trapping my leg there. So it's your top leg. That does all the work on this one you've got to get my heel really close ideally right if she could she would get this heel here around the bend of her knee so that's the closer the better not a lot of people can do it you need to have a bit of flexibility to be able to do it but as long as you trap the whole heel like this and not like the feet or the toe it should feel like the person on top can't knee slice through and the more they try the easier it is to go to their back and to sweep them as well where you must have this sort of connection here, trapping. Okay, This bottom leg doesn't need to like do anything at the moment. It's only going to help us to move. The whole leg, the tension comes from the top leg there, pinching and basing her toes on the mat. The other leg you're going to see, we're going to use it to, to like sweep the person. So we're going to shrimp underneath. So you're just going to see her doing it now. She hugs this leg. This is your other um, little... These two hands are basically pulling me into the sweep. So she's going to collapse my knee down, shrimp underneath, and she's going to sweep. So that's our regular Lucas. Let's sweep. That's the sweep we saw. The, um, we broke down a fight last week. That's the one that we saw most often. Okay. So person goes for a knee slice. Swim for your underhook as soon as you can. Cut their hip. Hug their leg. Shrimp underneath and sweep. So this is one of my favorite sweeps. Um, there's a lot of combinations to it. A lot of people will base with both hands, not accepting the sweep. And you can juggle them to a back take as well. A lot of sweet chains that you can do from there. But that's our basic fundamental sweep from the knee twist position. Um, the times you're not going to be able to do this move is if your partner on top um, sit on his heels really heavily. So he just puts all his weight backwards, which means that Kirstine can just get up in those cases. Okay. So it's not, if you can't hit the sweep, it usually means that the person's giving you like a, a get up position. Um, so that's our first little sequence there. Someone goes for a knee cut. If you have the underhook, try to set up your quarter guard and Lucas leg sweep. The next thing we're going to look at is the back step, which is the most um, dangerous one. This is what they're aiming to do. And this is what you should be doing on top in half of the scenarios, okay? Um, if you don't have the underhook, you can't really pass. You can pass, but you're going to create a scramble, which the person on top can kind of win, um, lose sometimes because... As long as you have the underhook and you stay behind the person, you have a shot at their back. So your only other option here is either like guillotine or back steps. Okay. So here's the back step. And they're usually trying to like kick free or even leg lock you sometimes. Um, so that's the back step entry there. So on bottom, you should be expecting all of these um, moves. Okay. Um, the back step is probably the most common in our gym because we have a lot of leg lockers. So shh, this is our move to do here. There are other moves as well, but here, Kirstine could accept. Um, she could like juggle her hooks here and take do some fancy moves um, to take the back and etc. Okay, but right now we're just looking at really easy um, fundamental moves. But you feel the person back stepping. You allow them, and there's a 
little thing here about the leg work that's really important okay cursing change the side of her legs so on this first move you back step she doesn't triangle her legs okay so i'm able to turn her body into this l shape and kick free so your whole goal from reverse half guard is to stay as flat as possible this is non-leg lock scenarios but by the way so they back step She's going to triangle her legs and she's going to base her foot on the floor. Uh, which means that it's very hard for me to pull this knee and turn her into that L shape. So I'm essentially stuck in this position right now on top. And to prevent all the leg locks, she's going to hug me. Okay. So before she starts doing any move, she's going to hug me tight. Which uh, most people think is good for them, and they start putting pressure on on your on the person, and then you can do the sweep here, which is a bridge sweep, and you come up on top. Um, we're gonna see the master of this technique um, later on in the in the breakdown fight, but it's his primary move um, for the move. Okay, so that's our reverse half guard. Ideally. This is slightly better in the gi. In no gi, you have to deal with all the leg locks and stuff. But um, it works sometimes in no gi as well. This is a good good way to stop people from attacking your leg as well, just by hugging them. Cool. And then the now it's our deep half when to go for it. Um, so like I said, one of your counters is the back step because you don't have the underhook. Okay, Kirsten gets the underhook, I backstep. Your other strategy is to go to directly to a mount when someone underhooks you. So you go for a knee slice. Kirsten underhooks me. So I'm going to tripod up and I'm going to drive my knee to the other side and we land in that position. Okay, it's a very good counter, requires a bit of timing, but it works really well. And that's your indicator to go to deep half. It makes it a lot easier. So instead of forcing the deep half, I think knee twist is a bit more powerful than deep half. So I'd go for deep, uh, I'll go for knee twist first. And if my partner gives me that entry to the deep half, that's when I'll go to deep half. So here we go. The main thing is, as soon as you feel that knee lifting up, Hold on, I think computer's loading. Ugh. I need a new computer. This is all broken. It might crash, guys. Hold on. Here we go, we're back. Alright, so when you feel that knee coming up or driving across, like this, that's your time to go for deep path. So you swing your hips underneath and you go deep path like this. <laughs> right? Um there's we'll see there's many ways of playing deep path. Um Kirstein is going for the Farrier style, which is hiding your arms so it doesn't don't they don't get attacked. But there's quite a few entries that you can do. But that's our deep path indicator. Okay. And now it's our deep half moves, okay? There's two types of deep paths that we need to understand. I call, I don't know what they're actually called, but I call one of them Homer and the other one Waiter. So, here we go. Same indicator here. This is me doing the move now. Homer half guard is this one, which I call. It's when I hug this hip. And I control this knee. Okay, the way the guard we're gonna see we hug the other hip instead, and it's also called the farrier from deep path. But the main reason I call it Homer Simpson is because of that little walk um, that you do. It's like that meme that Homer Simpson does in the movie. We we'll just walk like that. Anyway, your whole goal here: this hand is pulling the hip joint down. This one is pushing the kneecap to the side. So essentially, you're just creating torque to sweep the person. Very easy sweep to do. And you just spin on top. 
right? So that's your usually your primary D path move. Doesn't require that much um, technique involved. You just pull really hard on those little on that hip joint and that kneecap. And most people accept it because it it's just the only way your knee can go at that point if you have it in the right place. Okay. Um, then we have. Uh, things that could go wrong with that move. There's only one thing that I need to tell you guys. Um, and that's the guillotine, okay? When you come up from the sweep, this happens to people a lot. They tend to either get triangled or they get um, guillotined. The triangle is because they let the bottom leg go. Okay, so keep the leg trapped the whole time. The guillotine comes from you leaving your head on the left side there. So if Kirsten sits up and guillotines me with her right arm, I'll be in trouble. So that's why you take your head directly to the other side straight away. Okay. Um, make sure you remember this if you are going for the sweep. Then we have the deep path back door, which is essentially your one two move from deep path. You try the first sweep, it doesn't work, so you just backdoor it. You get up behind them, and you go for some form of double leg or single leg. Again, these are two scrambly moves that you're gonna. The first one's not so scrambly, the homer one. The backdoor is very scrambly, but you should win most scenarios if you're a bit faster than the person. You get you get good little um, places there. And then the last um, deep path move you might want to get good at is the waiter guard. This is for more like bendy kind of players. Um, stocky and like non-flexible dudes, I'll stick to these two. Um, if you're playing more brain bolos and you're focused more on backs and etc. This is the move to do. So for the waiter guard, we hug the other hip instead, so we're not controlling the, the same leg. We bring our hips up and we go into this, what we call wader position. And there's loads of sweeps and back transitions and leg lock entries that we can do. But that's essentially the wader guard, okay? No worries, Marianne, that's completely normal. <laughs> These are like guards that people tend not to use at all and if you haven't done probably classes with me you've probably never done them before because i don't think anyone in the gym teaches them except for me and maybe steve steve as well um because no, caesar teaches the path a little bit um but yeah but the whole um harvey yeah he's very good at deep path he does a deep half over unders. He's got Caesar's game basically. <laughs> but yeah, but the one I'd say is very good that no one knows is the um, quarter guard. This is the sweep, like I think only 10% of the gym knows. And the reverse half guard sweeps, which I believe is only me and like two other people who play this. These are the ones that you can surprise people with. But the whole point of this, uh, like it is going to be hard for you to recognize all these positions when we come back and etc. But think of these lessons as um, like understanding God's connections and etc. Because uh, that, I think that's, that's the only thing you can learn from these because your body is not going to be doing the moves. So everything is going to be hard to imagine and that kind of stuff. But if you know that what quarter guard is, if you know what a deep half is, if you know what waiter is, and you know what reverse half guard is, that's like really important. And it will just give you more knowledge. Someone who doesn't know about reverse half guard, you'll be hitting tons of move on him. People who don't know about deep half, you'll be hitting lots of move on them. So as long as you're understanding each position and their names, I think that's that's the most important thing to get out of these lessons. Because <laughs> as long as you know where you are, later on, you will know how to do the sweep or you'll learn the sweep and you can ask me. Instead of 
remember you saying remember that thing that you showed me like ages ago where you can say remember that knee twist move that you showed me and then it'll be easier for me to remember but anyway let's recap everything before we move on to the um to the fight breakdown so today's lesson was quarter guard which is when people knee slice us we trap the end of their foot we get our underhook and the connections we have to quarter guard are deep half reverse half guard and waiter sweeps so here's what we're stopping so the whole lesson is based on this little move here where the person goes for knee slice we're gonna give up on our knee shield i forgot to mention this but this is important so normally we put our knee shield in here and we try to push the person away right to stop the knee slice but if we're going for knee twist we completely accept it we kick our that leg there through and you're gonna see that leg on this one sorry so she goes for i go for knee slice she's gonna kick the leg through and trap the foot and then you're in quarter guard and from quarter guard the things we're watching out for one is the back step and which guard are we setting up from here let's see if people been listening I'm counting the brownie points by the way I think yes they reverse half guard so here's someone back step we set up reverse half guard beautiful so and our primary sweep um, from reverse half guard it's gonna be this bridge move but again there's lots of moves we can do back takes from here we can go there's a whole scenarios that we can can play around with but your main move hug them tight do a massive bridge and we go cool um okay someone you're starting to go for your knee twist and you feel that knee driving across where should we go from here I have 20 minutes in between meetings and go. I want to get paid to watch you. You should be paying me to watch me. This is like the amount of effort that I go through these videos for you. <laughs> What's the answer for this? Nice deep off. Yes. Okay. So that knee goes up. This is what will happen if you don't go deep off. And. Boom, knee goes up. Whoops, that's the wrong one. This one. So as soon as that knee goes up, boom, swing to deep off. On our deep off moves are. Home sweep. Boom, which is just pulling the hips down and the back door, okay? And again, right? What I hope you guys get out of this, right? These are just sweeps that I'm showing you. But you can make your own branch of moves from here, okay? Um, cool God. There's, you can create your own branch of moves, of primary moves that you're going for, and etc. Deep path, you can, any deep path move that you learn from Caesar or us, me, you can add to your own chain. It doesn't necessarily have to be anything, um, but the indicators are what's important here, okay? The knee comes up, you go deep path, guy back step, set up your reverse half guard straight away, and then focus on the moves that you're going to do. Um... Yeah, the triangle from deep off, that's really normal. So again, the number one goal when you're sweeping from deep off are two things I mentioned. So the first one, okay, when we're sweeping, we sweep, one is losing the connection of the leg, okay? Keep the leg hugged the whole time. If you let go of this leg as you're coming up and not pinching your knees, you get triangled. 
Okay, that's what's happening to you, Ginger. The second thing is guillotines. You are going to get guillotined a lot. You ha As soon as they're swept, you let go of the leg and you hug this leg instead and you go over-unders or double-unders. Okay, so you see me going over-unders there. But at no point I lose connection to the leg. That's really important. So the leg stays in between. Even if I don't have my feet crossed, I'm just pinching my knees here, keeping the foot trapped the whole time. People are going to want to attack that far arm of yours like 90% of the time. They're going to go for some form of Kimura or some form of triangle. And it's a mistake on their part. They're giving up the sweep for that. Okay. I get the sweep on beginners and blue belts like a hundred times without doing anything because they're trying to triangle me. So they pull me up instead of me actually sweeping them. So you shouldn't be trying good anyone if they're trying to like play deep off on you. They'll try fish for this arm and they'll pull you up. Okay. So just stay pinched with your knees and bring your head to the right place after you sweep. And that's to this side. Otherwise you will get guillotined and you will get um, triangled. If you remember those things, you, you won't get caught. Okay. From free court guard, do you... What do you do if you're flat on your back? So, I think he means, do you mean three quarter mount or three, this position here? You mean this one? This one you're meant to go deep off. So that's our deep off indicator. Um, you're flat. She's only flat because she didn't go deep off. Do you understand? So right now, she stayed where she was and she got squashed. Okay. So, you're here. This time, she's realized that she's getting squashed. All she's going to do is swivel her hips to the side. And she won't be flat anymore. Look. You understand? And you can still do this after. It's going to be harder. If you get flattened out like this, you can still do it. Okay. All you have to do is let go of this leg and hug the far leg. And then you'll be able to go to deep path. It's not to create space. It's more like... Basically, the difference between deep path and free quarter mount is very simple, okay? I don't have a good angle to show you, but three quarter mount, your knee is out. Okay, so imagine my right leg there, my knee is on the floor. Okay, deep half basically means I have her knee swallowed, um, the knee swallowed. So deep half. So three quarter mount, this knee will be on the floor. Deep off, the knee is just on your tummy or chest, like this. That's the only difference. You understand? So I can't put my knee back to the mat anymore because she's on deep off. But if she wasn't on deep off, then I could put my knee down to the mat. That's the simplest I can make it. Cool? Any more questions? But yeah, you guys should really... Deep off is probably one of the easiest positions to um, get good at um, really easily and fast. It's like a, it's like one of those like magic tricks. Ooh, cheesy bread. Okay, moving on now. Do you know what these are, Ginger? <laughs> She doesn't know the Portuguese name for it. These are the real questions. What's this Brazilian snack called? Pound your queijo, you got it. <laughs> it is pound your queijo. Is it true Brazilian? She's been to Brazil. Right, so now we have Jake McKenzie. Oh, nice and warm though. So, 
little backstory from this guy. He's one of the very few non-Brazilians to win the Brazilian World Championship. Um, he used to train in Brazil. He's from GF team. But he has the most unusual game you will ever witness. But he beats a lot of good people. This is him in the London Open. So we have him here. He pulls off guard. The guy knee slices. Jacob McKenzie. Um, Alright. So guy's going for a knee slicer. You see? Um, straight away you notice that he doesn't play the traditional knee shield to stop. Um, the knee slice uh, and that's because he plays court guard okay you see him here boom he triangles his legs and he traps it now all of this is in the lesson so Oliver here who's also from the UK very good um, player notice that the guy that Jake McKenzie has the underhook right so again he has the underhooks so what's um oliver gonna do here does anyone know he can't do the knee slice we just did it in the lesson back step yes okay reverse half guard so that's what oliver does he back steps so he can try to do i'll try to make it clear for this so he went to reverse half guard and he's trying to do this move to him. Um, this one here, sorry. He's trying to back step on hopes that he turns him into this L shape and kicks free. That's Oliver's move, okay? It's the most traditional reverse half guard pass that people show. And it works all the time against people who don't know how to play reverse half guard. Well, Oliver didn't know that this guy is a reverse half guard master. <laughs> so he wanted him to back step. Jake triangles his legs. And he stops Oliver from tur basically turning him into that L shape. Um, he sets up his grips in the gi. He always likes to take the belt grip or the gi grip to help him do his moves. That's just um, like a bonus stuff. But right now, Oliver's playing the guy's game. He keeps hugging him. You see, getting him tired and tired. He starts opening up the lapels. And he stops him from grabbing this knee all the time. Okay, because he knows that if he turns him into that L shape, he could um, potentially pass. So he just doesn't let him have that knee grip. And he's slowly opening the lapel up and getting it um, better and better. See? So he's just taking his time here. There's a little bit of the hug. Now you guys might not know he's trying here. But I watched his DVD. So I can tell every single move he's going for. These are all moves that's on his DVD. Um, right now he's trying to like loop his arm. Or pass his lapel over his neck. It's one of the moves he shows in his DVD. I think, I'm not sure if he does it or not, but anyway. There it is, he's trying to wrap the arm. So now Oliver has no base on that side. And now he's ready for his sweep. He's just waiting for the right time. Now here, he baited Oliver again and Oliver took it, you see. So as the person on top, Oliver was fine when he was up on his arm. Like this. So he had base at this point. To stop him from basing. Um, Jacob hugged him. So uh, that that, so Oliver would collapse onto his elbow. And hug him back. Which he did. So you see he's going to hug him now. With his right arm. And then Oliver hugs him back. And he keeps trying to force him down. All the time. And he's just waiting for the right time now. We should see a sweep coming up soon. So in leg lock world. 
um, it's a good position as well because he can't really attack Jacob's leg because um, he's got that lapel wrapped and pulling him onto him. So Oliver's a bit lost there. I think he finally gets the grip there. He's trying to make him hug him. There it is. There's the hug. This is the position he needs now to do the sweep. Oliver finally settles down, so he bridges. And that's the sweep. So we just watch that again. So there's a couple of things that we're looking for. I'll show you on this one so it's a bit clearer. But when someone backsteps, these are the things we're looking at, okay? This arm needs to be hugging me on the head and the hips need to be on the mat. Okay. Oliver wasn't like that at the start. So that's why he took so long to sweep him. So from here, Oliver was like up, up. His hips wasn't on the mat. You see? And he wasn't hugging him. So he's fiddling with his arms and his base just so he can finally sit on his hips and when he does he does his bridge and you can see you end up in like a perfect position nice and tight almost past so he forces him into the half guard he's got underhook and cross face and he can do his um half guard strategy now whatever it is to start his pass sequence but it's a fantastic sweep you end up in a really nice spot When do you use the right leg underneath the... Oh, so that's another variation of the sweep. Yeah, the Jedi mind trick is before they backstep. So you have to juggle the hooks um, before. Um, I'll try to find a YouTube clip for, it, for you. And I'll show it. Let me see if I can find one. While you guys watch this bit. This is just slow pressure now. You're going to see... Pretty much all that half god moves that we did on Friday. So this is the hook backup he's doing. And then into the pass. So... I think I found a video, Dave. Hold on. I'll post it on the chat. Because I, I don't know. If, I can't show it. Otherwise, I'll get like banned again. But that's when you use the Je Jedi mind trick. It's usually before they backstep. So you have is a timing thing. So he squashes him for like a lot of time. We'll just carry on. He's just moving around. Guy finally recovers. Let's just move on to the bit where he gets swept. Because that's the important thing. I just want to see him on the bottom. Here we go. There's another. So he gets swept at some point here. Here we go. And he sweeps himself like straight into reverse half guard. So here we go again. Same exact chain now. Oliver goes for a knee slice. The guy gets an underhook. He back steps again. We're back on reverse half guard. Um, this time Oliver is trying to go over the top instead of um, like hugging him. But... Jacob is just keeps pulling him down. You see, he's fishing for his legs now. He keeps hugging him. He just wants Oliver to hug him back. Gets his grips. Trying to break the trouser grip again. 
He looks like he's in a bad um, position, but that's basically his game there. This is a good counter that Oliver's trying to do now, where he's trying to cut his knee across. Uh, it's probably the best counter to the reverse half guard. Gets the free quarter mount here. Now we see a deep half recovery here that I was talking about. He's keeping his arm in the middle here, which, and then he can just shuffle his way. And he's basically in deep path right now. And I think that's where it ends. But you saw there about like three of the techniques that we used. Um, this move here is, is the knee across. So here, that's three quarter mount. He should be going deep path, which he does. There we go, his arm goes inside, and then he starts shuffling, but time runs out. But yeah, that's basically um, all of these moves that we looked at today. So we had uh, the guy knee cutting. Um, he goes for his underhook, but he primarily, so this is his primary move as well, the Lucas Lake Sweep. He wanted to do this move all the time. But Oliver was too quick with the back step. Um, so instead, he played the reverse half guard game, which is um, the bridging, which is this one, where he bridges. Um, and then at the end there, we saw this happening. Okay, very fast, but this is essentially what happened. Um, Oliver went three quarter mount like this. If he stayed hugging this leg, he'd be in trouble. So instead, he went to deep path, which is this move here. He swiveled his hips and he hugged to deep path. And there's loads of... Um, basically, this is one of his fights, but if you Google him or YouTube him, you'll see him doing exactly the same chain like a hundred times over. This is his A game in competition. And you'll see a lot of like... Knee twist as well, and a lot of um, back takes that he does from those positions. But yeah, that's today's lesson. Any questions, fire them away, or join the Discord group and ask me there. I'll send the link now, see if people know how to join. We can talk. I'm going to be going on Reddit now, and I think I'm going to join Rogerio's um, workout in about nine minutes so if you guys want to join i think he's doing the zoom thing but i'm feeling fat so i need to do some form of workout anyway you guys seen all the vinnie magalloins memes There's a Brazilian guy who always says that leg locks don't work. And he just got tapped and snapped his foot in half with a heel hook. But he appeared to be fine. <laughs> it was disgusting. Oh my god. And then he's acting. He, he didn't feel any pain whatsoever. Let's see if we can find it. Ugh. I have to crop this after. Is it this one? Nope. It was here somewhere. Oh, this is post match. It's on Instagram. How do I find it? Don't, don't discuss <laughs> on future. Let's Should be on YouTube somewhere. Here we go. Right now, Vinny Cray Cray goes down. That term was. Oops. Randy is so I think, right? <laughs> so here's the background, right? We got Vinny Magalhães. He's like ADCC veteran. Um, he's basically made out of rubber 
first, uh, let me give you an insight of what this guy can take, right? So, before you watch that one, you must know about this one first. Um, Vinny. Here we go. You gotta watch this video first. This guy literally doesn't tap to anything. He's like worse, worse than meow. Mute the video. Where we go? This is Verdum getting him in the armbar. Now this is like this is the the pre, pre insight on him first, and then we we'll showed the ADCC one. The guy puts him in like the worst armbar I've ever seen in my life. Look at this. Look at the bend on this elbow. Jesus. Look at this angle. <laughs> Look at that. Jesus Christ. He's made of rubber. He's here for like a full like five minutes, man. And the guy escapes and wins as well. He escapes and then he wins the match on points. <laughs> but basically, he makes fun of leg lockers and he says that leg locks don't work because he's beating um he's beating quite like good people that do leg locks, and none of them have been able to tap him. Including like Gordon Ryan, which is the main one. But anyway, he fights Greg Jones. Limits. Greg Jones gets him in the heel hook. An inside the hook, which is even worse. <laughs> Here we go. Gets him in like three heel hooks. This is the first one. So that's the first one, and I'm pretty sure he popped it there, and then he gets another entry later. Midway through the match, they're talking as well, so <laughs> Greg is like, are you alright, and asking him questions about it, and he's like, yeah, it's fine, <laughs> and then he gets him in the heel hook again, on the same foot. Yeah, look at that foot. Jesus Christ. And now Greg Jones is basically saying it's fucking terrible. Your foot is like dislocated and shit. <laughs> and they're like chatting. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. And apparently he doesn't feel any pain. Oh man, <laughs> the funniest part is like Chelsea on and commentating. <laughs> and anyway, I think Vinny like verbally taps after that. And there's a in there's an interview after. If you go into his like Instagram and stuff, you can see his. His interview of them like chatting afterwards, but it's just so weird. Apparently, he done no damage whatsoever to his knee, just his um foot like basically dislocated, I think. But man, that was just that was gruesome. And all the memes are coming out now. Like, look at this Photoshop. <laughs> Someone photoshopped. Jesus. Yeah. 
I think it was yesterday, I don't know, two days ago. It was recent. <sighs> this is, I think it's like a, is it, it's not, a, it's called BJJ Underground, there's no one there. Just like an empty arena and they're still calling people for it. I think it's like, Funded by the UFC or something. Does anyone have any news on that island that they're making? Oh crap. Alright guys. I'm going to end it here because uh, it's Rogerio's conditioning time. Now I'm going to go join. Let's go um, over there if anyone wants to join me. Very good conditioning class. But take it easy, everyone. I'll see you all on Friday. And stay safe.